SharePoint can work with emails to send alerts, notifications, and invites to the end user. SharePoint can also be configured to receive emails from the end user. Once the email is received, it can be added to a library or a list in SharePoint. Before you can do this, SMTP must be configured inside SharePoint. Let's have a look how to configure SMTP server settings inside SharePoint. To configure email in SharePoint, first run the SharePoint admin tool from administrative tools under the start menu. From here, you want to log in and then select the operations tab from the top right. First of all, I will set outgoing email settings by selecting the outgoing email options under topology and services. Outgoing settings are easy to set up. Enter your SMTP server, the email address you want to appear to your client when they receive emails from SharePoint, and a reply email address. You can also set the character set that you want to use for the emails. Once finished, press OK. Next I'm going to set up incoming email by selecting the option Incoming Email Settings. You will notice that when I select this message I will get a message saying that the SMTP server is not installed on this server. To install the SMTP server, open Server Manager, select Features, and then select the option Add Features. Scroll down to SMTP Server and select it. Press OK for any other prerequisites Server Manager may ask for. Once SMTP Server is set up, run the SharePoint Admin tool again and log back in. Now I can select the Operations tab and select Incoming Email Settings. Before SharePoint will receive any emails, you must enable it by selecting Yes for Enable Sites on this server to receive emails. The setting mode should be left on automatic as this will configure the settings for you. If you need to configure a drop folder, select advanced. As you can see, when I select advanced and scroll down to the bottom, I have the option to configure an email drop folder for SharePoint. Sometimes you may need to enable this if you have programs that save their output to files rather than sending them via SMTP. This is not uncommon in data processing and conversion software. In this example, I will scroll back up and select Automatic. Next I can configure the Directory Management Service to allow SharePoint to interface with Active Directory. In this example, I will select Yes. However, if you have a server farm, you may have the config on another server. If this is the case, select Use Remote. SharePoint has the ability to create distribution groups in Active Directory. From here, you can enter in the OU and domain that you'd like these groups to be created in. Next you can enter in the SMTP server that will be used for outgoing mail. Notice the local server has already been added, but you can change this if you wish. The next option, which is on by default, will only allow emails from users that have been authenticated. This helps prevent spammers sending emails straight into your SharePoint system. If you decide to allow the creation of distribution groups from inside SharePoint, you need to make sure that the option Allow Creation of Distribution Groups from SharePoint is enabled. Once enabled, you have four additional options to control the approving of these groups. The first option, if ticked, will require a new distribution group to be approved before it is created. The next two options are unticked by default. If ticked, they will ask for approval when a change is made to the distribution group's email address or the distribution group's title and description. Lastly, you can tick the option Approve a Distribution Group Deletion. Remember, when you tick any of these options, you must approve the action when it occurs. If you wish, you can change the display address for your email server to a more friendly name. This will be displayed to the end user on the web pages and incoming emails. Lastly, you can specify the SMTP servers that are safe for this email server to communicate with. This stops your SMTP server being used to send spam from rogue SMTP servers. When you are finished, press OK to save the settings. Once you configure incoming and outgoing email settings, you need to configure how they will work in SharePoint. In SharePoint, you can configure it to add information it receives to a library or list. The email address is created in Active Directory as a contact. Once created, the end user sends an email to this address and the email is put into SharePoint. Let's have a look how to create a library and assign an email address to it. First of all, I need to create a new library to receive emails with. To do this, go to the site actions and select create. There are four different libraries you can create. For this exercise, I will create a document library. Once I have entered in the description, scroll down to the incoming email section. From here, select the option, allow this document library to receive email. 
and then enter an email address. SharePoint will create this email address in Active Directory as a new contact. Once I press Create, the library will be created and ready to receive new documents via email. All the end user needs to do is send an email to this address. The outgoing mail in SharePoint allows you to receive alerts when changes occur and send out invitations to your users. SharePoint supports SMTP Server over port 25. Once configured, the end user can quickly receive emails alerting them to changes in a number of different formats. Let's have a look how to configure alerts in SharePoint. If I select the test library I created earlier, from the left hand pane, I will be taken into the library. From here, I can select actions and then select the option alert me from the list. In the alert section, you may want to change the title. This will appear as the subject in the alert email. Next you can set who the alert emails will be sent to. The change type section defines what kind of changes you want to be alerted on. You can select all changes or a variety of different options including updating and deleting. The next section deals with who changed the document and who owns the change document. For example, if you own the document, you probably don't want to get an alert when you change it, but you may want to know if someone else changes it. The last section deals with when alerts are sent. If your library has a few changes, you may want to leave it on send email immediately. If the library experiences a lot of changes, you may want to select the option daily summary or weekly summary depending on your needs. Once you have finished, press OK and the alert will be created. That's it for SharePoint. SharePoint is a very large and complex piece of software. You don't need to be an expert on it for this exam, but I would recommend that if you are planning on deploying it in your company, you do a lot of testing before you deploy it.